All right. The United States is a land of contradiction. It is a beacon for democracy that allows its citizens to be disenfranchised from its own political processes. It has held freedom as its core principle since its founding, but was among the last to abolish the slave trade. It is the isolationist home of immigrants. It is a place that many glorify without the acknowledgement of the realities of its past. With the help of High Museum of Art in Atlanta, Georgia, the contradicting United States will be further elaborated upon. North America is home to many of the world's natural wonders, from Yosemite Valley to Delicate Arch. The continent has a diverse cluster of beautiful landscapes, one of which being Niagara Falls. Now, Regis Francis, Regis Francis Zinu, um, painted the falls on several occasions throughout his life one of which hangs the United States Senate building according to Antiques of Fine Art. Regis was born in France and studied his craft under the painter Hippolyte uh, Delaroche, who was a landscape painter. He moved to the United States where he, could, where, um, where he worked from a studio in Brooklyn from 1840 to 1870. One of Regis's more famous works is the oil painting titled Niagara Falls. It was painted in 1855, directly in the middle of Regis's time within the States. The painting depicts the falls at sunrise with two presumably young boys standing on the rocky shore of the, of the uh, Niagara River. The two hikers appear to be having a conversation and have their backs turned to the sunrise, which is obscured by the landscape. The painting exudes a feeling of nostalgia. This feeling is captured by using primarily warm colors to create a feeling of comfort and safety. Examples of this include a large peach cloud of waterfall spray directly above our hikers or the orange brown colors of the shore. These colors are often used to invoke a feeling of hunger when used in advertising due to our minds perceiving them as desirable or appetizing. Even the water contains an array of warm colors, from the reflections of the sun's yellow light on the surface of the water to the teal used in the falls behind the hikers. Even the river in front of them is primarily green and orange. While it still appears darker and therefore colder, it, is used uh, it still uses primarily warm colors. This is done as to not draw our eye away from the focus of the image. Above the hikers and to the right, we can see more fantastic use of color. Here we see flora such as pine trees, maple trees, etc. Firstly, gr firstly, greens that are um, that are used here are more yellow green than they are blue green, which gives the trees and brush this depth that creates a feeling of life. This is further exaggerated by the peach waterfall spray behind the tree, framing it in uh, framing it in such a manner as to make the tree silhouette pop. Next to the tree is another more naked tree. It has almost no branches and is surrounded by red leaves at its base. These red leaves blend into the rocks below creating a continuous space on the right side of the painting. This continuous space is used to begin the visual narrative that the artist has created. It first pushes our eye forwards to the lighter parts of the painting by use of contrast. This is where our eyes first meet the falls. Next on the, on the left side of the falls, we see a large pile of rubble, which angles down to the right along with the waterfall spray. This draws our eyes from the falls down to the river, where we meet the sun's sharp yellow reflection in the water. The trees are then angled in such a way as to draw our attention to the two young boys who are wonderfully framed by the two boulders around them. The boulder to the left angles down to the right towards the duo and the boulder to the right juts up above them and is likewise angling down to the right. The boulders perfectly frame the hikers at, um, 
as a warm peach light behind them shines from behind the scenery, which implies that the which implies that is the direction they walked from as the two are facing away from the light. This visual storytelling is why the painting drips with nostalgia for a place that the audience may have never been. If we were to go on a more inferred interpretation of the piece, we can use the light to symbolize the past of the two hikers and how they're in the process of leaving it. The color coding of the past implies that it was a happy, comfortable place with the use of pinks and yellows, while the place they are facing is a darker location with lots of rubble, rough water, and fallen trees. Having the location where the two came from being obscured by the terrain helps imply that there is no going back. This helps to reinforce the interpretation of time moving forward. This interpretation may be going out on a limb, but it can symbolize maturing into adult, an adult, leaving the simple comforts of childhood into a rougher but still beautiful place. Whether, whether or not this interpretation is valid, the painting still masterfully, masterfully captures the feeling of the American wilderness. It glorifies the land itself and makes it so appealing that one could be forgiven for mistaking this piece as a National Park's advertisement. On the, cron on the contrasting side of the American experience, <laughs> the 1930s saw a renewed cultural focus on the working class who made up the bulk of the American people. Due to the onset of the Great Depression, class became a large presence in the American life. Now, Alma Sewing is a painting by Frances Chris that depicts a young professional black woman working at a sewing machine. The painting simultaneously glorifies Alma as a hard-working professional while also not ignoring the reality of her working life. According to the painting's description by the High Museum of Art, the image reflected in the lamp is a self-portrait of the artist. That guy. The artist Francis Chris. According to the de uh, description of another one of Francis Chris's works, American, he was born in London but moved to the United States in his early life to study at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. He later lived in New York where he had his first exhibition. His city life was also the focus of many of his abstract works. While the reflection of the lamp could be interpreted as just a clever way to sneak a self-portrait into the painting or even as an artistic flex of skill, I much rather prefer the, situ prefer the situation where it is used to frame the context of the work. Here we see a young black woman. She's focused intensely on her task. She exudes professionalism, but is still working within the confines of a system that is indifferent towards her. She doesn't make eye contact and works diligently on her task. This focus on her is aided by the color choices used by Chris. Her colors are bright, saturated, and contrasting against one another. Her deep red top, white apron, and the black shadow behind her contrast strongly against the pastel wall with its baby blue curtain, peach fabric, and even dark navy dress behind her, outlining, outlining her silhouette and causing her to pop. A plant behind a cylinder of fabric in the background of the image is curved in such a way as to highlight her face. One leaf ending right on the line where the center of her forehead is and it travels down with her gaze putting our view on what she is working on. While not much light is present in the image, the light that is there lands on her giving uh, giving her this divine focus in comparison to her surroundings. Her surroundings are also distinctly, distinctly white. From the pastels to the paper doll of a thin white woman on the wall. Even the self-portrait of the artist is distinctly white looking. He, also, he, he is also looking directly at her while she works. She does not engage with any of it as if she is not a part of the world she is participating in. A striking element in the piece is the way he portrayed her hair. It's flat and perfect with curls on the end. His hairstyle is likely part of her uniform. She must look presentable for the clientele after all. 
her hair can be a, her hair can be a microcosm of, of the entire situation where she works within a world that is not wholly her own. If we use that interpretation, we can also infer some other interesting features about the piece, such as the way he chose to stylize her hands. The painting is a whole. The painting on a whole is rather abstract with very few features being hyper-realistic. However, her hands are an exception to that. He did not stylize or feminize the hands in the slightest. They keep the features of an actual worker's hands. This is in direct contrast to the dainty little hands of the Caucasian cutout on the wall. The wrinkles and textures of her hands help convey the image that this is a person who has worked with their hands for quite a while most likely accidentally hurting themselves a few times on the sewing machine and building up a callus. Continuing with these perhaps unintentional themes, another element of the painting that has a lot of detail is her outfit's buckle. It is shiny, clear, and distinctly facing the audience. The thing that is interesting about this is that it is placed at the base of her neck, a small caveat need to be stated. Uh, while the artist intended for some racial elements to the piece, he may not have intended for this specific interpretation. That being said, her buckle is almost like a collar, as if she were a slave hard at work, which is, uh, which is uncomfortable, but is a possible interpretation as it may be drawing a direct parallel between workers and slaves. Even an article by the uh, draw, a, draw the Line Against Prejudice asks the audience what racial components could be read into the piece. Both Niagara Falls and Alma Sewing are paintings done by European men who moved to the States and depicted, the tr depicted a truth about their new home. While these truths may seem contradictory, together they display the reality of the States. Having the good with the bad, the beautiful lands with the racial prejudice.